Hi there, this is Love Johar and th in this particular session we will again discuss about some of the key terms and definitions which are used in ISO 27001 and ISMS. So, I will before I start I will try to introduce myself, who am I and uh, why I am doing this. So, my name is Love Johar and I have a very strong information technology security portfolio. I have an extensive work experience and knowledge in information technology and IT security and ISMS and ISO 27001 and I've also worked with different security companies in the past in my career. So why I'm doing this, uh, basically I have created this channel to help anyone and everyone who is trying to study and or planning to study about ISMS, that is Information Security Management System and ISO 27001 implementation. And um, during these sessions, if you have any queries, I will also try to give you some free study materials for any of the topics that you want me to discuss here. And uh, basically, I want to share my entire ISMS journey and experience with all of you out there so that you don't have to go through all the different paths and different routes that I went through while I was studying my ISMS and ISO 27001 for the first time. So in this particular video, we will be discussing about some more basic terms and definitions in continuation with the previous video that we had so that in case if you are con confused by any chance for any data security acronym or abbreviation or expression or any information security jargons for that matter this video is for you and it will definitely help you out and uh, so let's start with some basic terms that will help you in order to become ISO and IC 27001 certified so Let's start with access control. What is access control? Why do we need access controls in place? So access control is nothing but in, in includes both access authorization and access restriction, which means that access to a particular asset will be either authorized, that is approved, or the access will be restricted, that is denied, based upon the access controls and their levels. So that we have defined for that particular asset. So that means access controls basically refer to all these steps that are taken to selectively authorize and restrict the overall access to the assets. The important thing to note here is that all the access authorizations and restrictions are often established in accordance with the business and security requirements of your organization. So after access controls, let's try to see what is an audit and what is the purpose of, of having an audit in the first place. So an audit is nothing but an evidence gathering process. That is, you need to gather some evidences in order to satisfy your audit criteria. So basically an evidence is used to check and identify how well the audit criteria are being met or not. So as far as the nature of the security audits are concerned, audits must be objective, impartial and independent and all the audit findings along with the audit process should be kept and maintained as a documented information so that you can review it further. So in the future and uh, audits can be internal or external which means that internal audits are referred to as first party audits which are often performed by the organization itself while there are external audits as well that can be either second party or third party. But before we dive into these types of different audits, I think we should first we should try to understand what is the purpose of having an audit in the first place. So the aim of both kind of audits, uh, whether external or internal, is to check whether the ISMS that you have set up within your organization is compliant with the requirements of the standard or not. So that is the main purpose of having an audit in the first place. So now, as I mentioned that audits can be of different types, you must be thinking that what is the difference between the first type of audit, the second type and, and third type, which means the first party, second party and third party audits. So here are the main differences in all the types of audits that an organization may have. So first party audit is also called an external audit, which means a regular full or part time employee of the company can audit the process, uh, you know. And internal audit will be more in depth and detailed one because it will be performed by your own employees. And on the other hand, the second or third party audit, which is also called an external audit, will provide you with a different set of eyes and a different set of perspective and view so that the external auditor will probably be able to see something for what internal auditors and employees in general have a blind spot on. So in case of a second party audit which is an external audit as I've mentioned an independent contractor is usually hired by the company to perform internal audits and in practice scenarios uh, in practical scenarios second party audits typically involve the customer auditing the supplier uh, in order to ensure that the supplier is not breaching any of the set predefined criteria in the contracts that they have signed and agreed upon so it's kind of a reliance check on the on the contractor uh, just to make sure that uh, he is following all the you know guidelines that have been set in a contract with you and the uh, contractor 
and now the last but not the least are third party audits which are also called as surveillance audits so third party audits are done by outsiders and have nothing or no affiliation with the audit it means the organization that is being audited has no relation at all with the third party audits so this is the basic difference between the three types of audits so since we are talking about audits let's see what is an audit scope and uh, why do we need a scope for any audit in the first place so the scope of any audit is nothing but a statement that specifies the focus extent and boundary of a particular audit which is in consideration so the scope could be either specified by defining the physical location of the audit the organizational units that will be examined the processes and activities that will be included and the time period that will be covered so these are the different things that the scope that, that actually define the scope of uh, an audit so for example uh, let's see if i can define an audit scope by saying that for company x the audit scope would be limited to and confined to site a only so here i have defined the physical location of audit like let's say a company has five sites site a b c and d and e so here i have defined that the audit will be confined to site a only which means that the scope is defined to site a and next if i say that it will only cover the operations department of company x and no other departments will be involved in this audit so here as you can see that i have defined the organizational unit as well of the of the audit and i can say that only the operations department will be involved in this particular audit so i have again defined another item in the scope so and after that all the internal and external processes uh, will be examined during the audit if i'll add this to the scope which, so now here you can see that i have defined which all processes and activities will be included and examined within this audit so i have added another item to the scope and about the time frame i can add that the audit should be completed within 15 days from the date of commencement so here as you can see that i have also added a defined time frame under which the audit should be completed and over with so Uh, that's it in uh, that's it for this particular training video and in the upcoming training sessions and training videos for ISMS and ISO 27001 as well i'll try to cover some more definitions since since there are a lot of different terms and definitions which are used in the ISO 27001 uh, you know implementation and ISMS so that's it for this particular video and i request you to please subscribe to my channel if you are really interested to study ISO 27001 and if you want to understand its implementation so information security management system is a very vast topic so please ensure that you subscribe to get the most out of it and uh, if you have any questions by any chance please feel free to comment below and i would be really happy to respond back to you thank you so much this is love johar